find the volume of the space between the rectangular prism and the sphere inside the rectangular prism of the equal height. So we're finding the volume. Um, So on this one, we need to find the volume of the uh, prism and then subtract out the volume of the sphere, right? So in this case, we have to find the rectangular prism. Could we just say length times width times the height? Okay, yeah. what is the volume formula for the sphere? 4 pi r squared. 4 pi r cubed oh. over 3. So I'm going to have to modify my key. I see another mistake. So our length, width, and height for the prism, just, just, just going to be all three numbers in any order. And then we have 4 pi. Now we know the radius has to be how many given that the whole side is 8? Four. 4. So we have 4 cubed. You need water? No. No? Okay. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and find the first piece. Uh-oh, more hiccup. It's contagious. Uh-oh. Okay, 768 on the first part. Is that right? And then I will do 4 to the power of 4 divided by 3. Two fifty six over three, and I want to leave it in ter terms of pi, so that will be meters cubed. Yep. Well, the multiple choice will kind of give you the hint of the uh, format. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to number twenty four. Everyone, go to number twenty four. Okay, is it, wasn't this basically from the last unit? Yes. Okay. So looking at angle one, or actually let's look at the condition. Um, Hannah, go ahead and read. In circle, in circle O, and measurement of angle, the arc AB is 50, and the measurement of arc DE is 30, and the measurement of BC is 50. Measurement of EA is 130, measurement of CD is 100, and AB is a chance. Okay, so we know the arc AB over here is 50, so let's label that. DE is 30. Then I know BC is 50. Notice our figure not drawn to scale, and that's okay. EA is 130. And then I know CD is 100. How is AD tangent? Where are we? Oh, AD is not tangent. It should have been a different point right here. Is there a point we can we use on this one? We got A, B, C, D, E, A, G. There you go. So that should be A, G. It's tangent. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. So angle one is right here. Isn't angle one the central angle? Central angle is what to the arc? The same. Now let's go to angle two. Angle two has vertex on the circle, meaning it is our inscribed angle, correct? Yes. Our inscribed angle is what of the arc? Half. 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 That's 25. Let's go to three. Three is right here. And three, angle three is also our inscribed angle. So we know the arc is 30, so it must be how many? 15. <coughs> For angle four, it is in the inside, so here's what I need to do. And I may need to write or highlight on this one. Angle four is right here. So I need to find the average between these two arcs. So we know we have 30 plus 50 divided by two is 40. Angle five is an awkward one. This angle five, the vertex is still on the circle. It's still half of the arc. So here's my arc. Half of that is how many? 25. Is angle 6 also another inscribed angle? Mm -hmm. But it looks like angle 6 is part of EAB, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's EAB, I need to take 30, 100, and 150, 
and take all that and divide it by two. How many would that give us? 90. 90. Okay, go to seven. Seven is out here. So if it's on the outside, we subtract them. So here's angle seven. We take the larger arc, which is uh, 100, <clears throat> minus 30, which is how many then? Seven. Divided by? <clears throat> how many would that give us? 35. Wait, how is it 35 and the smaller one's 30? Where are we on this one? This angle 30 is basically the same as a central angle, and that central angle could be smaller. Okay? All right. So for angle 8, it's another inscribed. So 130 divided by 2 is how many? 65. And then angle 9 is another inscribed, and that's also part of 130. So how many is that? 65. Okay, what about angle 10 then? It's an inscribed angle. So it's got to be 50. All right, let's go on to the last one. I still feel like the last one is like four separate problems. No, no, okay. You picked it? No, they're all one problem. Maybe it's multiple choice and I get to choose one. No. No? You're the one who made this. Oh, God. See, that's why you can't just like put multiple choice. Are you done? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. All right. So for this one, <clears throat> I would only draw the segments that's needed to make it not so difficult. So in this case, I know I need the OR, and I know I need OT. Do I need anything for the OQ for part A? Nope. So let's redraw this. Here's my circle. I need something on the outside, something somewhere in the middle. I'm just mimicking this, because this is a figure for all four of them. What's up? There's OT. Is that OS? It's a 2D figure. It's a 2D figure. Okay. So OR is 6. And OT is 4. And we're asking for TS, which is our X. Now, this is the potty training one. So we know Cohen is going to miss it or make it. Oh. Oh. And it was like, ow, ow for us, right? Do you really not need water? No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's like, okay. You drink it upside down. down. All right. Down. 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 So then we have, I want to start with like flip this segment. So we have four. And then the W stands for the whole thing. Four plus X. For the other segment, the outside is 6, and the whole thing is 6 plus the imaginary 0, I guess. And let's go ahead and simplify. We have 16 plus 4x is equal to 36. Then we get 4x is equal to 20. So how many is my x? 5. And it's asking us for um, ts, so that is our 5. All right, are we ready for B? Okay, for B, I know we need OU this time, all of that. We need um, OR, so I'm gonna ignore the middle piece. So here I have something over here and something over here. I'm just resketching every time. So OU is five radical two. And then UQ is seven radical two. And it's asking us for OR, let's call that X. Is this OW OW again? Yeah. So the first segment outside is 5 radical 2. The whole thing is going to be what? 5 radical 2 plus 7 radical 2. And when I put them together, it's going to be 12 radical 2. And the other side, the outside is X. The whole thing is also an X. All right, so we know when I put these two together, is then two going to pop out? Mm -hmm. yes. So really in the end, it's um, five times 12 times two. How, ma how many would that give us? 120. 120 is equal to x squared. We want to square root on both sides. 
And yes, we need to simplify the radical. So what two numbers would satisfy with a perfect square? Four and 30. Four and, 30. and if I further split the 30, it's going to give me six times what? Five. five. And six is going to further go down to two to two and three. The two, three, and five is not going to give me any commonality. So our final answer would be two radical 30. All right. Are we ready for the third piece? Yeah? yeah. Okay, I'm going to redraw this. So we're looking at OQ this time and TS, so we don't need OR. So I need this one and I need this one. So we know OQ, the whole thing, is 6. OU is 4. And then we know ST is 5. And let's call this one X. So let's write out our L, L again. What's on the outside of the first segment on the left? Four. Four. What is the whole thing? Six. Six. What's on the outside on the right? X. And the whole thing? X plus, X plus five. five. Very good. So we have 24 is equal to X squared plus five X. And because I see X squared, an x and a constant, we're going to have to factor this out. So 0 is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 24. And it's 1 go doable. What's going to satisfy negative 24 as our product and sum as a 5? 8 and negative 3. So we know this alone is going to say x could equal negative 8 or x could equal negative or positive 3. Oops. Because I'm giving you a segment and measurements are positive, which one is going to be our extraneous solution? Three. This right here is going to be like not possible. That is our solution. So we know OT has to be 3. OT cannot be negative 8. All right, last one. Let's sketch this again. So I know I need OR, so the one on the right. And I know I need the one in the middle. So it says OR is 10. And then it says ST is 21. And that's going to be X. Is this L, L again? So we know the outside of the first one is X. Together is what? X plus Very good. And then outside is 10. The whole thing is still 10. So we have X squared plus 21X is equal to 100. Is this another factoring? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have x squared plus 21x minus 100 is equal to zero. Wait, Ms. Yes, ma'am. I think x is the whole thing. Okay. Is x the whole thing? S-O. Mm-hmm. So x would be the whole thing, and then the outside would be x minus 21. Well, 21. it says on this one, st is 21. Yeah. Once we find it, we'll then add on to it. Once we find um, S O T, we'll add 21 to it for the final answer. Okay? All right, let's think about our factors then. What number is going to satisfy the negative 100 and the 21? 25 and negative 4. So negative 4 and 25, very good. So we know this is going to give me x equals 4. That one is going to give me x equals negative 25. Oh, it's a plus mm -hmm. So which one is our solution? Four, four. So we don't like this one. We like this. So 4 is going to go right here. But the question asks us to find, give me the whole segment. So how many would be our answer? 25. 25. On the test, you have to 